guys, welcome back. Um, I am going to do something I haven't done in a while, and that is uh, respond to a thread response. This is going to be a thread response video. And I was very inspired to come and do this because um, one of my favorite channels, Jorgen S., who uh, replied to my contest, and I've really grown to love your channel, Jorgen, um, started a thread, and I wasn't even aware of it until this morning, frankly. Uh, about uh, best his well he was celebrating kind of his 30 years of collecting music and collecting vinyl records his collection started in 1986 so he's been a long long time vinyl collector so he was uh, looking back and talking about his favorite singles favorite albums and reminiscing about the year 1986 and I know other people in the vinyl community have done these um, feature years. You know, you pick a year and you talk about your favorite albums of the year. So I, I've been enjoying uh, Rock Boy 680s. He's done mostly 70s. He's done 73, and I think he did 79. May have done 77. And Ross Goodall did a few years. I think he did a couple years in the 60s and maybe one year in the 70s. So it's not, I'm not doing anything new that hasn't been done a few times, but... I really, really enjoyed Jorgen's look at 1986, and I have come up with a list, and I wasn't sure exactly what to do because, frankly, I made my list before I watched your video because I saw what the theme was, and I said, okay, I'm going to stop the video, and I'm just going to make my list because I just don't want to have any influence. I want to just pick what I think I like the most, you know, just to look back at so many great albums. I mean, it was a tremendous year in music. So um, then I made, I made my list and um, pulled out a few things that I want to show you. And then I went back and watched your video. And it was really, really, do really done well. You did it differently than I'm going to do it here because you did talk a lot about singles. And I don't have, I, I've never been a singles collector, Jorgen. Um, I, I love singles, of course. It inspires me to buy albums. But I've always been since I was very young. I think you and I are about the same age because um, I was in high school in the mid-80s. And I think we're about the same age, and we probably started really appreciating music around the same time as well. Um, if I liked a single, I would just go buy the album, um, or save up and get, you know, I didn't buy as much then as I do now, obviously, but I've always been an album buyer, so I've never really been too much into buying singles. Um, but I really liked your um, take on how you went about celebrating the year 1986, because you did talk a lot about singles, and you pulled them out, and you showed them. And it brought back so many memories. Uh, your video really <laughs> tested my memory to, to, to think about some of these songs that I hadn't heard or thought about in decades. So that was really, really cool. Um, but in this video, I am going to focus on albums because I've always been an album buyer. So what I have done, Jorgen, to celebrate uh, with you the year 1986 is to uh, break things down into three segments. Um, I've got, of course, my top 10 list that I'm going to save for very last. Uh, I've got 10 honorable mentions that we'll go over in a little bit. And then uh, I've titled it 10 Not To Be Overlooked as well. So um, it was really tough. I went through uh, uh, online, there's a website that lists every album that was released in every particular year from like 1965 all the way through now. And um, I use that as my guide, really. And I looked about uh, I think it was 786 albums or something crazy like that. It was a big number. And uh, I went through every album and really picked out the ones. I took my time and really picked out the ones that not only were important to me then, but have stayed with me through the years. And I really still appreciate now, uh, maybe even more now in some cases than I did then. So it's kind of a combination here of stuff that I loved, absolutely loved, when that the year was happening in 1986 and stuff that has probably been more important to me later in life than it was in 1986 because I didn't know all these in 1986 but over the course of time I think this is a very accurate list of things that I would say today are my favorites so it's a little bit of a combination of both so what I'm gonna do as I know that these videos can get kind of long-winded and I'm guilt more guilty than probably anybody else in the vinyl community of rambling I just made short little video clips of the two bottom list. I made a 10 not to be overlooked video clip that only lasts about a minute. And then I also made a 10 honorable mentions list. So I'm going to stop the video here, edit it so I can play the little video clip and then come back and just talk briefly about that group of albums 
and then I will um, talk a little bit about where we're going to go from there. So I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll stop the video here, talk about this first group of albums. These are not honorable mentions. I've got 10 honorable mentions that didn't make the top 10, but these are 10 albums that easily could make my list on any given day and albums that I think uh, you definitely don't want to overlook. So you might see some duplicates from uh, when I went back and looked at your list and watched your entire video. There's a few things here that we definitely line up on. And um, let's uh, see what, uh, what you think of my list. So I'll stop the video here, let you guys watch the little clip that I made for the uh, 10 not to be overlooked. Well, then we'll come back and we'll talk about those records. So enjoy the clip. I'll be right back. So as you can see from that uh, short video, there's some killer albums in there. And uh, frankly, it was really, really difficult to not include them in either honorable mentions or my top 10, official top 10, I guess you could say, as of today. It's going to change depending on my mood and what strikes me as better than the others. You know, it, it really is any of these 30 really could be interchangeable, I suppose, with a few exceptions. Um, but you saw just now a minute ago, you saw an al albums from the Moody Blues. I love that album. Uh, Steve Winwood, that was uh, probably kind of the peak of his solo career. I mean, he was popular in the 70s. He had Ark of a Diver and uh, some maybe a little bit more proggy sound, but like many, he caved and did some 80s sounding type albums and uh, had some big success with that album back in the high life. Um, August, um, I like Eric Clapton in every every phase of his career, so it was a, I had to include that album because I really like it. Produced by Phil Collins, 80s icon. Billy Joel's The Bridge. Now that's an album, see that album would never have been in my collection in the 80s. I wasn't a Billy Joel fan in the 80s. I liked him in the 70s, uh, but I never really followed anything he did in the 80s. Now, as I'm older, I appreciate all of his stuff a lot more than I did then. I don't know what it was. You know, I, I think it's just one of those artists that got better for me uh, as time went on. Uh, Crowded House, you saw uh, the, one of the best debut albums of the entire decade, I think. Uh, here's one that we lined up on, The Pacific Age by Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. Terrific album there. Uh, I don't think you mentioned Duran Duran in, in your video, but of course, 80s Legends. Uh, Prince, you, I, don't think he's, I don't think I saw any Prince in your video. Uh, but Parade is a very, I would say, underappreciated album of the time. Uh, had the big hit single Kiss on it, but uh, the album itself didn't get great reviews, didn't get great audience uh, reception. I think everybody still wanted him to be doing Purple Rain um, and uh, probably still do, but Parade is a terrific album and one that people should check out if you're only familiar with his uh, most uh, uh, most famous albums. That's one that you definitely want to check it out. I was happy to see in your video the uh, Howard Jones album, uh, One to One. Uh, you were talking earlier in the video about albums produced by Arif Martin. Uh, I think you showed, um, boy, what was it that you showed? Uh, maybe it was Alphaville, or I think it was Alphaville. Anyway, you showed a couple albums that were produced by Arif Martin, and then I thought, oh, but he forgot Howard Jones one-to-one. -one. And then you came back and you, and you pulled that out, so I was happy to see Howard Jones make the list. And I agree with you, it wasn't as, as good as Humans Live or Dream Into Action, but that's, that album has some really killer tracks on it. And um, he was trying to move away a bit from his synthesizer... Uh, one-man band kind of thing and um, did a terrific tour that year so I'm happy to see that uh, he made it all the way out to Sweden and had some success there and um, you know I, I really really enjoyed this group of albums so I hope that you 
saw some things that you also got uh, re-familiar with, brought back memories, and um, you can see that we don't line up entirely on this stuff, but um, I, I think we have some similar tastes, that's for sure, at least in the 80s. So anyway, um, now the next list that we're going to do, I'm also going to do, to do a short clip on that because I don't want this video to go terribly long. I think it's uh, going to be maybe in the 15 to 20 minute range, hopefully. Um, I'm going to show my top 10. I did pull them out so I can actually show you. I have all these records. I just wanted to not go on and on and on because I know my videos do get a tiny bit long at times. So the next group of albums I would consider 10 honorable mentions. I guess you could say these almost would make the top 10 on any, any given day. You could interchange these with the top 10 and I wouldn't mind. It would be fine with me because they're all great albums. So uh, take a look at the next uh, list, see what you think of that. Then we'll come back and I'll actually show you the physical copies of my top 10. So here's the second video. We're calling this one 10 honorable mentions. So enjoy that and we'll be right back. So there you have it. There's the uh, 10 honorable mentions. Um, you, I'm sure, again, saw some brilliant albums in there that people are probably... These, these videos can be controversial. I've read comments on other people's top, vi top years. Uh, for example, Rockboy680 seems to get blasted a lot, you know, and, uh, and I don't know why because we're all entitled to our opinion. We all have our favorites. And by all means, you know, leave me suggestions and whatnot, but let's not blast each other and uh, tear each other apart because I may have not included something that you find to be one of the best albums. Just give me suggestions. I love that kind of stuff. But, you know, try not to tear me apart because I missed your favorites because this is my list and it's my video. So anyway, I, I just I read some of these comments sometimes and I almost roll my eyes saying, man, give the guy a break. You know, he's one, he's young and two, you know, he doesn't have all those albums yet. So just leave him suggestions. Anyway, in this group, um, obviously you've been listening to in the background music a song called The Brazilian by Genesis from the album Invisible Touch. Love that album. It was a great year for Genesis. Uh, you saw Paul Simon's Graceland. I think that album won Grammy of the Year that year. Um, one of the more beloved albums in his catalog, if not his most beloved album. Uh, the Moon and the Melodies by Harold Budd and uh, the Cocteau Twins. Uh, I absolutely love that album. And that could be interchanged with my top 10, no problem at all. I love Harold Budd. If you're not familiar with his ambient music, um, check out. That's a great place to start. And if you like that, you're going to like a lot of his solo albums as well. Filigree and Shadow by This Mortal Coil, part of the 4AD family. Um, you know, it's kind of an all-star band of uh, 4AD superstars of the day. I love, I love that sound. I think that was their second album, maybe third album, and it's just an absolute classic. It's so moving, so lush, a just gorgeous album. Um, you saw New Order, brilliant 80s, 90s, 2000s, current, um, the, everything they did pretty much could make my list on any given year they released something. Um, you saw Screaming Blue Messiahs, um, the one and only album I own from them. They may have had some other albums, but Gunshy is a beautiful album. Every song is just a toe tapper. They feel good. Um, I love that album. I can't remember where they're from. I think they might be Australian. I'm not entirely sure. One band I know is Australian is Ice House. Very, very overlooked. They had some mild success here with uh, Man of Colors. Uh, I think that album came out in the later part of the 80s, but uh, Great Southern Land is another great addition to their catalog, so if you haven't heard that album and are only familiar with songs like Electric Blue or, um, you know, maybe another track off that album because that was kind of a successful album, um, check out Great Southern Land and all of their albums are really quite good. And then you saw uh, World Party, Private Revolution. 
I'm a big World Party fan, and I put World Party on one of my recent videos as far as artists that I wish could get back together, and I got a lot of feedback that they are together. It really is just Carl Wallinger now. All the other members that were in World Party have moved on and either retired or doing other things. But it really has always been Carl Wallinger's show with World Party, so to me, they're still around, so I didn't even know that. So, like every time, you always learn a lot from these videos, so... Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, that list, Jorgen, and whoever's watching, um, that was my honorable mention. So, now we're going to get to my official, uh, I guess, top ten. We'll, we'll kind of leave it kind of, like, as of now. It could change, but I did pull these out, and I think I'm pretty comfortable saying that these are... In the last 30 years, these are the 10 albums that have stuck with me the longest, who would have the most meaning to me, and I play a lot. So uh, we'll start with number 10. Is a band that a lot of people may not have heard of, uh, but one of my favorites, I believe this is their second album, Clan of Zymox, Medusa, another one of the 4AD bands that I absolutely love. Very dark, very electronic. Uh, I don't think they use guitars at all, but I love this album. Maybe just a little bit less than I love their debut album. Just I think it was just self-titled Clan of Zymox, but um, this one is almost every bit as good. And at times I have liked it better. Um, the song title track Medusa, uh, Michelle, and Louise. Uh, it's just a really, really great album. Um, they're still around, actually. I think it's just a couple members, or maybe just one member that's still part of the original lineup. Can't think of his name off the top of my head, but um, they're still around. They really moved into more of a goth, heavy, heavy goth, um, you know, leather and silver and dark makeup, and you know, but back in this, in this time when they're prime, when they were clan of Zymox, because now I think they just go by Zymox, they've gone back and forth, it's either Zymox or clan of Zymox. See, this is why I made the clip, because I ramble and I go on and on. Clan of Zymox, Medusa, check it out, if you like darker Bauhaus, um, Peter Murphy, you know, darker music like that, um, that would be a great a thing to check out. Number nine is an act that everybody knows, and uh, this is not really one of their more loved albums, but I think it had a lot of hit singles on it, and I think it was one of the best-selling albums in their catalog in the UK. Americans liked it, but they're not, over time, they're not as well known for this one as they are for other things like Sweet Dreams, but Eurythmics Revenge has a lot of great songs on it, and I think it gets a little bit overlooked as far as how good it is, because you get Missionary Man, which is a great song, uh, Thorn on My Side, When Tomorrow Comes, Last Time, and The Miracle of Love. That's all on one side. Every one of those were good singles, I think. And then the B-side is just pure fun. Let's go, take your pain away, a little of you, in this town, and I remember you. So, Eurythmics Revenge, um, you know, I think Eurythmics get trapped into that synth-pop um, genre, where they did get a full band for this album. They, When they toured this album, they had a new look, new sound. I mean, they always did Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This and out the songs from Touch, but this album actually explores more of the band sound, and it's great for a live performance. So this is the first time I saw Eurythmics play live on this tour, and I thought they were fantastic. So. I put that one at number nine. Dave and Annie, classic. I mean, you can't go wrong with anything from the Eurythmics. Um, this one I have mentioned before when I was doing a um, contest uh, reply to Rockboy 680's Pick a Decade and Pick one of your top albums from every year. This made my runner-up list for this particular year. <coughs> so you've heard me talk about it before, David and David's Boomtown. Very unknown again. Um, unfortunately, this is their one and only album. They broke up, uh, this duo broke up after this album. David Bearwald went on to do some solo albums and had some success. Um, David, uh, the other David, I'm not even sure of his name. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, but this is a great album. Uh, Welcome to the Boomtown was a pretty big hit, in, in America anyway. And it's in, in the vein of um, Bruce Springsteen maybe a little bit. Um, Bob Dylan a little bit, you know, it's kind of a folk singer-songwriter kind of uh, great album. It doesn't really sound too 80s, if I'm being honest. It has stood up the test of time very, very well. Uh, you also get tracks like uh, well, Swallowed by the Crack, Ain't So Easy, Being Alone Together is just a phenomenal song. So I love this album, so if you've never heard it, uh, yeah, I'm sure you can pick it up really cheap. Any of these are really pretty cheap. So um, check out David and David's Boomtown. 
Next one up, uh, again, a band that had initial big success. This is their debut album, and then kind of fell off the face of the earth. I love this album, though, from Cutting Crew. I don't know where they were from. I think somewhere in Europe. Uh, Jorgen, you probably know. Um, but I don't recall where they were from. The Broadcast? I think it's just called Broadcast, not The Broadcast. Um, I love this album. First time I heard it, I was blown away. It was one of my favorite albums of the decade, for, for sure. And unfortunately, they didn't do much after. I think they had one or two albums, but they didn't go anywhere. But this is a really, really good album. You might want to just pause the video on this one and see if you recognize any songs. But I love this, of course, their number one hit, uh, I've Just Died in Your Arms Tonight. Um, but the whole, whole album is really, really good. And I wanted to pull this out, too, and show you that I have a uh, picture disc. Uh, it's a saw blade, obviously, a uh, picture disc of the entire album, which I guess is quite rare now. I've had this for a long time, and um, you got to be careful with it because these edges are actually really sharp, so you could probably almost cut yourself on this thing. I mean, it's not like a, a knife sharp, but you could definitely make a little poke with it. But I love having it, and I'm so glad it's part of my collection. I don't play it because it doesn't sound as good as the regular vinyl does, but it's cool to have um, a copy of the broadcast on that cool saw blade picture disc. All right, now we're getting into some really, really amazing albums. Number six, Life's Rich Pageant from R.E.M., one of the greatest bands of all time, really. Released this album in 86, and it's just chock full of great songs, too. I think in the effort of time, we'll just let you read through the track list there. Um, but one of their best albums in their catalog, I think, and certainly worthy of making my top ten, and I think a lot of people would agree that this is uh, worthy of the year's top ten albums. So Life's Rich Pageant by R.E.M., great band. Um, Jorgen, you talked about this, you just recently also did a top 10 albums from this band, and that's how I found that you were doing this thread. So you picked this album and, and, and put it in their top 10, I'm putting it in the year's top 10 at number 5, Depeche Mode's Black Celebration, oh, this is a great album, it's very dark uh, for Depeche Mode, um, you know, they came out of the synth pop scene, early 80s, pioneers of some stuff with synth pop, and this album was a, kind of a shocker when it came out, because it was really, really dark. You know, the title track, Fly on the Windscreen, and A Question of Lust, and uh, boy, it's uh, got a lot of great songs. Um, so, I, I can't say I loved it, loved it when it first came out, but this is one that I've appreciated more and more over time, and I would put this in their top five for sure if I was doing a, a Depeche Mode discography ranking, and that's something I might do sometime. I think that was a great idea, great video. And I should say, if you haven't checked out Jorgen's channel, go over there, he makes great videos. Just did a top 10 Depeche Mode, he's doing this, he's always doing something interesting, so. Um, a great guy in Sweden, I would recommend his channel to anybody who loves um, this type of music. Um, number four, uh, no doubt in my mind, one of the greatest bands of all time. Cocteau Twins, Victoria Land, another part of the 4AD family, at least during this phase of their career. And um, this is a really, really beautiful, lush, it's quieter album than, the, you know, when they're, for, I think this is their fourth album. Um, and it really, it did take me a little bit by surprise when it came out, but um, I love it. Maybe one of my favorite albums from them now. Um, I didn't appreciate it at the time as much as I do. This is an album that maybe didn't go over as well as some of their early albums did, but it's a classic. And if you like mood music, dream pop, shoegaze, this is an album for you. So check out Cocteau Twins, Victoria Land. <coughs> Every time I mention Cocteau Twins, I always say, I've got to do a video, a complete this, uh, collections video on them. And I do plan on doing that, but I think one of these days, uh, this one here is a no-brainer. A lot of people would probably put this at number one. I'm putting it at number three. You know, not, not not far down on the list, but The Smiths, The Queen is Dead. What an album this is. This is part of uh, a box set, so it's not an original copy. This is part of my uh, complete box set. But you've got, obviously, some absolutely classic tracks on here. The Boy with a Thorn in the Side is, might be the best song so ever. Um, anyway, here's the track listing on this if you're not familiar with the album. If you're not familiar with The Smiths or Morrissey, this is a great starting point in their discography, The Queen is Dead by The Smiths. Uh, it's a, just a gorgeous album. I could play this thing every day, I think, and never get tired of it. It's a beautiful album, so uh, it's their best album for me. All right, number two. Very hard not to put this at number one uh, because it is probably one of, if not the most beloved album of the decade. Um, and, you know, it had 
hit after hit after hit, and it sold incredibly well. And I did put this, I think, at the same position on Rockboy 680's contest when he uh, was asking us to uh, pick a pick a decade and, and uh, list every the top album from every year of that decade. I think I put this at number two, and I think I put the other one at number one. I think I'm being consistent, but as I said, my mood can change from day to day, so. Uh, these two are probably flip-flop one way or the other, but I'm going to stay with uh, the number two here, So by Peter Gabriel. And the only reason I don't put it at number one, I think, is because I love the uh, album I'm going to show my number one so much. But if it wasn't for one album, this would probably be my favorite album of that year. Everyone knows this album. There's no reason to really talk about it too much, but it was his peak of his success. This is the number one selling CD of all time, I think. At least it was for many, many years. And um, one of the first CDs I actually bought. So uh, I love it. Red Rain, Sledgehammer, Don't Give Up, That Voice Again, In Your Eyes, Mercy Street, Big Time. I mean, come on. It, it's just a beautiful album. And um, I think uh, maybe I was misspoke when I said Paul Simon won Grammy for Album of the Year. Maybe this won Grammy for Album of the Year. I'm not sure. It's probably one of the two. The only downside to that is I think it may be just a little bit overplayed, but. You know, if that's a downside, I guess that you could call it that. Anyway, I'm sticking with this as my number one. I'm very comfortable saying it is. But I will say this is an album I didn't even know in 1986. I knew of the band, but I lost interest in them. I was young, and I was into the modern dance, you know, fun music. You know, I just wasn't as adventurous on music than I, as I was as I am today. But this is the greatest album in their discography, and it's a shame that I overlooked it as much as I did at the time. Absolutely love it. Tough Tough, The Color of Spring. If you've never heard this album, you must hear it. It's an absolute gem, a classic, and it's moving and lush and gorgeous, and it's just everything you want music to be. So, The Color of Spring by Tough Tough. Songs like Happiness is Easy, I Don't Believe in You, Life's What You Make It, Give It Up, uh, Chameleon Day, it is absolutely stunning. This is a reissue, has a bonus disc of, I think, some live material, it's in Japanese there, um, so I really can't read it, but um, anyway, the bonus disc is on the red vinyl, and I'm not going to show you that, but there are original copies of this too out there, so however you go, get the CD. Play it online, Spotify, whatever, but you do need to hear this record because it is an absolute masterpiece. So, anyway, that's my look in my top silly ranking, I suppose, of my albums from 1986. So, I hope you enjoyed it, Jorgen. I did this because I loved the idea. 1986 was a phenomenal year in music. It was um, so much fun because that was high school days for me. And, um, you know, I have so many fond memories of going to record stores. I wasn't buying vinyl at the time, I will be honest with you. I was buying cassettes and CDs. It's about the time I started switching from cassettes to CDs. Vinyl was early in my listening days from, let's like, say, like the seven, late 70s through the early 80s. I was still buying records. Then I took a long gap in between not buying records, like I think a lot of people. And now, of course, you know, I, I go back and rebuy all this stuff. So, unlike you, you seem to have all original copies, and you've kept them for all those years, so great job there. Um, so, I don't know, if you were only, if I only had to pick one, I would say that you must hear The Color of Spring. That is a must, but I'm really happy with my list, I'm quite content with it, and boy, I tell you, when I was going through those 700 albums, there were so many, I could have put probably 150 and pulled them out because I still love them and own them to this day. It was a tremendous year in music. So I really love these, uh, taking a look at these years. So you'll probably see more of that on my channel. So I hope I didn't go too long. I don't know how long this is all going to be spliced together, but hopefully around 20, 25 minutes max. So hope you enjoyed it, Jorgen. Really love your channel. I hope you enjoyed my, my response to your thread, and I hope it inspires others to jump on board. So I'll leave a link for you. I hope everyone's doing well, having a good week, and, uh, and staying dry. It's been tre tremendous rain here in Central Texas, if you haven't heard. But no damage or flooding or anything here. Everything's fine. So anyway, I'll leave it with you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. We'll see you soon. And bye for now.